So, let us continue with the study of dynamic games. Last time we started with looking at dynamic games by first considering this example of uh, two producers producing a homogeneous good and the one the second producer could observe the quantity that the first producer had produced. Now, there is I will talk about a generalization now uh, or maybe let us say a different model now. Let us look at this with this particular example. So, the game starts with at let us say this node x ok. x is some some juncture in time it start this is we just denote that instant with x ok and at that instant it is the turn of player 1 to play. Player 1 can play either L 1 or R 1. If he plays L 1 the game goes to node z ok and then the game ends with payoff 0 comma 2. So, 0 for player 1 and 2 for player 2 right. If he plays node y, if he plays r sorry if he plays r 1 the game goes to node y and then at y it is the turn of player 2 to play. Player 2 has two strat uh, two options L 2 and R 2. If he plays L 2 then they would get the players get minus 1 comma minus 1 so both get minus 1 and if he plays R 2 uh, they each get plus 1. Players are maximizing. Let's let's maximizing players. Okay. Now, can you tell me what what should be the mode of play in this case? So, player two. Firstly, let's make clear our assumptions. Player two knows when it is his turn to play. Okay, when the, so he knows when the game reaches y, he knows that it is his turn to play, and he has to choose actions either L 2 or R 2 ok. When the node when the game reaches node z he player 2 also knows that well it is uh, game over there is nothing more to do uh, the, uh, the uh, and the game ends that that he has no nothing to choose from at game uh, at node z that is also something that is not player 2. Player 1 knows at the start of the game that it is his turn to play and and to start the game. Every player knows this whole tree they know that these are the these are how the payoffs are going to uh, play out this is what's going to uh, uh, these are the options available to each player and so on so all of this is common knowledge okay and during game play player uh, each uh, player 2 knows that when it is his turn to play okay so all of this is known so what this means is in short when player when it is player 2's turn to play at node y he knows also that player 1 has in fact played r1 we can conclude that from the graph itself. So, he has this information that player 1 has played R 1 in the previous step ok. So, now tell me how sh how should the game players play ok why? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, so the answer suggested here is one mode of play is to is player 1 plays R 1 and player 2 follows it up with R 2. So, one way of reasoning about this is the following. So, player 2's turn to play will come at at uh, when it come when the game reaches y ok and at once the game reaches y at that stage the game player 1 has already played R 1 there is not no going back on that. R 1 has already evolved the state is that the game is at state y. Now, player 2 has to decide what to play given the options that are in front of him. The options there are L 2 and R 2 ok. The options are L 2 and R 2 and in this case naturally given these two options R 2 is a better option. So, player 2 plays R 2. So, following that now if you think about this this fact that if if the game reaches y player 2 is going to play r 2 right then player 1 has the choice of whether to play l 1 or r 1. So, if he take if he plays l 1 he takes the game to z and then gets 0 for himself. If he plays r 1 he knows that player 2 is going to then respond with r 2 and then he is going to get 1 and player 1 is going to get 1. So, the choice for player 1 is effectively a choice between playing L 1 and then getting 0 or playing R 1 and then getting 1 clear. So, 
between these two naturally he would pick the choice R1, alright. So, so one mode of play therefore, possible mode of play One second. Player 1 plays R1 and then player 2 plays R2 and why R1 because better than playing L1, better than N1 which would have given him 0 ok and player 2 plays R2 why because this is better than playing You had a question? He knows the entire tree. The entire this whole 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 tree is known to him. To all to both players. Okay. So, so here in this, the, so whatever I said is specific to this structure, ok. Here being at y itself lets you conclude that player 1 has played r1, yeah, yeah. So, so, so player 2 knows that he is at node y, ok. From node y he can conclude that the only way y could have happened is that player 1 has played r1, right. So, that is how he concludes that player 1 has played r1. It could be that he does not know which node he is at and so on, those are more complicated problems, we will come to that in a moment. But right now, this is this is what he can deduce from this uh, from this structure, ok. If there were now to answer your other question, which is suppose there were uh, you know branches coming out from z also, then if player knows that he is at z, then he would know also from there that player 1 has played L1, ok. So, this we have to build into the assumption of the game about what player knows then I will come to all of that in a moment ok. Ok. So, this is one possible mode of play that player 1 plays R1, player 2 responds with R2. The way you have reasoned about this is is essentially similar is, is a kind of backward reasoning. We said we start from the end, at the end player it, the last player to play is player, player 2, he has two options L2 and R2. In the in the event that the game reaches node y, he has two options L2 and R2, and at uh, well at at that node, then he would play R2, and then the question for player one is whether you end the game right there by taking the no game to node z, or you actually take it further to node y and let player two play. Okay, all right. Now, uh, question then is. So, this is what uh, let us also write out the payoffs that the players get. What are the payoffs that a players are going to get through this? In this mode of play, player each both players get 1, 1. Okay, both players get 1. All right. So, question then from for uh, my question to you is is there another mode of play? So, there, there is no such uh, there is no formal definition. We have to think of modes of uh, ways of playing and because we have not yet defined uh, what a rational outcome of the game is. Yeah, ok, yes, ok, any other? Ok. So, that could be another way, but we have already seen that you know minimax type of thinking uh, is not applicable uh, when there is a 0, when there is a non-zero sum game. So, if you if each player thinks of the worst the case damage that the other player could do, then that is that does not uh, that is not the right way of reasoning because it will lead you to regret it uh, at the end of it all ok. So, this this is not a 0 sum game. So, therefore, uh, that that logic is not applicable. Is there any other way by which you can we can reason about what is going on in this game ok. So, I will claim that there is in fact another plausible outcome to this game ok and the other the outcome is the following. The outcome is that player 2 another 
plausible outcome. The outcome is that player 2 responds player 2 when it when it, when the game comes to y player 2 actually plays l2 ok player 2 plays l2 at y l2 at y and player 1 and player 1 plays plays l1 at x now this seem this may seem kind of absurd Okay, because player 2 plays L2 at y is what I have said here, he plays L2 at y, okay. but player 1 is playing L1 at x. Now, if player 1 is playing L1 at x, okay, if player 1 plays L1 at x, the game never reaches y, and the game actually goes to z and, and, the game, and then it is game over, right, the game ends there. So, the so player 1 play, playing L1 at x means that there is nothing for player 2 to do. But yet, player 2 is playing L2 at y. Okay. But let us just think through this and see how, how this plays out. Suppose player 2 plays L2 at, at y. Okay. What does that mean? The player 2 has promised to play L2 at y. Okay. Now, having promised to play L2 at y, what would, what would player 1 do? The, if player 2 has promised to play L2 at y, Player 1 would not want to take the game to node y, but instead want to take the game to node z by playing L1. At node z, it is of course true that player 1, player 2 has nothing to do. Okay, the game has ended. Player 2 has, uh, has not, no action at, at node z. Okay, but, but let us think about this uh, from the point of view of player 2. Player 2 has basically got, got player 1 to go to node z and end the game by promising to play l2 at node at node y right of course by promising to play l2 at node y he, he is essentially ensured that node y never actually comes and the game in fact goes to z and the game ends now uh, let's think in terms of a nash equilibrium here so assuming player 2 plays l2 uh, what is the best response of player 1 if player 2 is going to play L2 here, what would player 1 want to do? Naturally, he would want to play L1. And if player 1 is playing L1, what would player 2 want to do? He has nothing to do. He will, he just, then he can just stick to his, you know, promise of playing L2 at node Y. Right? So, player 2 has only committed to playing L2 at node Y. But it's a commit. It's a commitment which you can say is not credible in some sense because the game never really goes to node y, and no one can ever verify that he would have in fact played played L2 at node y. The game, in fact, because of that commitment, because of that promise, he is in fact go, he's he's in fact uh, he's he's ensured that the game in fact goes to node z. Yeah. No, no. We will come to that. So, what we know, we, we, we just want to solve for a mode of play. We will come to a formal list thing. What as of now, what all that players know is that this is the tree. Okay. That the, 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 the tree looks like this and we want to come up with uh, modes of play. So, what you, you can think of, see, so, so let us look at the other one. Okay. Now, assuming player 1 is playing, playing R1, what would player 2 want to do? R2. R2 is the best response to R1. And assuming that player 2 is going to play R2, what would player 1 want to do? He would want to play R1. So, there is a kind of equilibrium property to R1, R2. But there is also an equilibrium property to L1, L2. In the same sense, if player 2 is going to indeed play L2, it is better for player 1 to play L1 rather than go to node Y. And if it is, if it is, the if player 1 is playing L1, then player 2 can promise whatever the hell he wants at node y, including playing L2. But playing L2 is the one that makes player 1 go to L, uh, player 1 go to node z. Yeah. Hmm. 
Yeah. So he has. So the. So I. We'll get to the information part later. But but let's look at the rationality now. Okay. Now of course there is something troubling about this L1 L2 equilibrium. And what is the troubling part? The troubling part is this promise of playing L2. Right. If the node, if the game does go to node Y, it is not optimal for player 2 to play L2. If the game does go to node Y, player, uh, player 2 would want to play R2. But by promising to play L2, if his promise remains unverifiable. By promising to play L2, he ensures that the game never actually goes to node Z, node Y, it goes to node Z. Is this clear? So, so there is a, the, so what player 2 has done is has promised to play irrationally at this node. But then player 1 gets scared of that because he realizes that if the, if the game goes to node y and this guy does indeed play L2, then he is going to get minus 1 and minus and then he is better off therefore playing L1 which gives him 0. Is this clear? So, there is a, there is clearly something troubling here which is that that the there is a there is an element of that the uh, where player 2 you can say in some sense is thinking irrationally here is or or playing irrationally but he is he in fact playing irrationally or is he just committing to play irrationally because he is in fact what when it comes to the actual play that plays out he never actually is irrational he never has to play irrationally, he never has to take an irrational action at any node. This is the effect of commitment. He is just promising that he will play irrationally. He is promising that you know, I will do this and, and so on. But then therefore, this the, he never comes, the player 1 never actually comes to node Y. And this promise remains, you know, uh, you can say unverifiable. Hmm. Yeah. So let's 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 go through now since you may uh, since you are bringing up rationality, let's bring up rationality. In in this equilibrium, R one R two equilibrium, what did players get? Players got one and one. And now player two by throwing these tantrums has been able to get two by saying that he is going to play irrationally at node node y by committing to play rationally at node y, he has taken effectively ensured that the game goes to node z and at node z he gets 2. Now, can you really say that player 2 is being irrational in this? No, not necessarily. Each player, so play, you can say well, are, uh, uh, the really the question at hand is not about rationality, but whether rationality can include commitments of irrational behavior within it okay does promising to play irrationally can that be included as a possible mode of play in a completely rational setting you understand because selective ir or posturing irrationality or posturing to be irrational pretending to be irrational promising to be irrational you can give it whatever way word you want but this kind of a commitment to play irrationally is that can maybe that is part of a higher level of rationality right so once there is a dynamic game and the game is non zero sum a whole lot of uh, new phenomena start coming up and this the reason this is happening is because there is a there is the game is dynamic there is information that is that is there uh, that is being uh, that is that is present as, as an element of the game if player one if player if these players were playing simultaneously okay this the, none of these issues would arise okay so so let's let's now think about this formally and let us see how oh, we can uh, so these what all i have said here are these are two plausible modes of play but we need to think formally and say what write this down formally as a as a game write out what the set of strategies are for both players and let us see if we can 
get to this uh, through the Nash equilibrium. Okay, so let's uh, let's uh, write this formally. What are the strat strategies for the players? First, first, okay, let's let's take this one step back. What are the actions for the players? What are the actions for the players at player at at node at node x? The actions at node x the actions for player one are l one and r one. At node y, what are the actions? L two and R two for player two. Player one doesn't have any action at node y. Player two has uh, actions L two and R two. At node z, it is you can say well the game ends, but we can also say that we can put in a a kind of fictitious action here. We can say it's player two's turn to play, but he has only one action, which is to do nothing. Okay, let me just put it like this. He has only one action here, a fictitious action, and that is to do nothing. And it gives pay of zero comma two uh, to the player. Okay, so it's this is completely equivalent. It's like yeah. Yes, yes. No, no, no. So, but uh, see, the, so I, I'll, I'll come. I, okay, we will. What I meant was that these phenomena don't occur. Okay, so this, in fact, L one, L two. Since you brought it up, yes, it is in fact an equilibrium that arises out of ignoring information. If the essentially player two is acting as if you know it never mattered whether player one has played R one or not. He's acting like he's playing the way he would have if he did not have the information of player one's action. Okay, so but but we'll have to uh, you know exactly how because you know if he doesn't have the information of player one's action, then how does he know that he has to do nothing at Z and and this and Y? All of that has to be uh, written out properly. But loosely speaking, essentially what player player one is player two is effectively doing is ignoring the fact that player one has that at Y player would have player one would have he the game would have. Come to node y only when player one would have played r one. This has been completely ignored. So he is just simply com committing to play l two, no matter what. Now one way of doing this, if you since you have brought it up, let me. Uh, uh, I, I sorry for jumping a little bit ahead, but one way of doing this is to you know I can think what I call do nothing here. No, I can just relabel this as l two. So what he is effectively doing is, regardless of what has happened, I'll just play L two. I just relabel it. I just change the name of the action. I just call it L two. Doing nothing is playing L two. We can, yeah. In fact, we can go one step ahead. We can add another branch R two here and give the same pay of zero comma two to R two. I can even do this. So this, the, 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 all of these, this, this is a little. I mean, it's not as slick as. Uh, I am making it out to be, but but generally, I mean, you can in this case you can do all this. Okay, we have added a couple of fictitious actions, bogus actions, which give which have no strategic implication. Okay, it's the same game as before because okay. So now effectively, what uh, so now the player two has the same choices, L two and R two at both nodes, and he's saying regardless of what you play, I'm going to play L two, even though he has the information. He is in fact going to play L two. Okay, he could have said, "Well, if you come, if it comes to node, uh, if the game goes to node Z, then I will play this. If the game goes to node Y, then I will play that." But he he is ignoring that information, and that's that is now reminiscent of what we said in the previous lecture, which is the equilibrium of the game simultaneous move game is inherited as an equilibrium of the dynamic game. So that's your L one L two is then the equilibrium of the simultaneous movement. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this is so there is uh, so here that is another p possible mode of play, and that gets you to uh, gets you to uh, the blue mode of play that I have written here. It gets you to this. 
So, what this there is a term for this in in in, uh, in English have you heard of this is actually borrowed from French it is what is called faith accompli. What does faith accompli means? Faith accompli means that ok yeah player 2 is making this threat ok, but it is in some sense a bluff right because player 2 is effectively saying that that he is promising to play irrationally. Player 1 can say I call your bluff, I will take the no game to node y, now show me if you can actually play uh, if you can actually play L2 right and that gives you another solution of this game. So, so there are many people who disagree about various uh, whether which, which one is more uh, which one is more reasonable and so on ok. There is there continues to be debate in amongst game theorists about this. My own stand about this is that both are actually valid games of play modes of play ok. And the reason for that is because we have never no we the the whether rationality can include what I said promises of irrational behavior is not something that we have been able to rule out completely yeah. Rationality you can take as common knowledge. <laughs> so, nationality is common knowledge, but issuing threats is uh, is not part of irrationality is not being irrational. So, so, so this is some people argue the way you do and they say that therefore, this is the only uh, way to uh, solve the game ok that one should. So, the, so this is what they say is that rationality should also be applied recursively at every step the player is rational ok. Well as, whereas I am completely comfortable with this idea that rationality can include a kind of uh, that you can have an enlightened form of irrationality rationality where which includes a pretense of irrationality also ok. So, these are these are open questions ok no, none of this is uh, something that we everyone has been we, we, there is consensus on in this in the field. I have this is I am teaching you my what I think is my uh, what I feel is the more reasonable way of thinking about this. Okay. You might find some books uh, saying that this is the more credible uh, equilibrium. The reason because uh, the reason is because this is a this this adheres to a stricter form of rationality that uh, rationality that holds at every stage given the set of options the player is uh, rational if he is picking the best option at each stage. But then what the, uh, then question is then essentially all other equilibria which are which involve some form of threat will there be lost. Ok. And I find it I am it, I do not find it reasonable that these should be ignored ok. Anyway, since I am using this uh, this term the faith accompli here basically refers to the situation where uh, you know uh, the faith accompli means that the deed you, your options are locked because the deed is done you know you this guy just moves and then he called uh, moves to uh, player 1 moves to y takes r1 moves to y and then player 2 has no choice. And then therefore, at that stage invoking rationality given the limited choices then he, he has to play r2 ok. This second equilibrium is this here is you can say is recursively rational. Uh, essentially if you see the way the field has evolved also right. In many ways the second one has become uh, more attractive because because it has easier tools ok. Here effectively what is happening is you are doing you are recursively computing from the end. So, it is a form of dynamic programming that is being done ok. Those of you who know dynamic programming you are basically saying ok what would you have done at the last step then you say ok from then what would you have done at the step the previous step and previous step and so on. So, so people from operations research control theory etcetera find this very is something they find this to be a, a solution that they can compute using the tools that they know ok. So, therefore, this has become a very popular concept. Now, popular does not mean right ok these are very different things and uh, but unfortunately, it is the one that uh, that also comes up in a lot of in a certain type of literature alright. 
whereas if you want to really explore this this uh, the, the second concept the, uh, if you want to allow for threads then you need to compute things in a very different way and then that will uh, that you know because the tools are in there the analysis is not there you know that also becomes a problem ok. But this is but but there are enough examples and it is well understood that this the, that uh, that threat equilibrium is something that that occurs generically in a dynamic game ok. So, this you can so the second one as I said can be thought of as this one can the first one can be thought of as recursively rational the second one is can be thought of as a as a threat as a threat equilibrium there is also in this uh, another word that is also used is that this is in fact a non credible threat. No, a non credible threat is a threat that does include a promise to be irrational. So, threat can can still be you know you could you may want to be you may still be rational, but irrational but uh, but but damaging to the other player. So, threat just includes a damage right uh, to the other player. The, the the irrationality part of it is 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 uh, is encoded in the world not credible non credible threat non credible means essentially you cannot a player uh, the uh, if the game does indeed come to node y then player would player 2 would not be able to carry out this threat before we go to more formalization let me also mention uh, another another concept which comes up this comes up in in geopolitics for example have you heard of the word uh, mutually assured destruction or assured mutual destruction right so so what that refers to is essentially this the it is basically what player 2 is basically saying here is he, he remember player 2 is going to get minus 1, but in the process player 1 also gets minus 1 and it is that which player uh, player 1 gets influenced by and that is what makes him move to L 1 ok. Now, essentially what he player 2 is promising to do is is if the game comes to node y then we will I, I will not only destroy myself I will also destroy you ok. This is this mutual destruction that is being promised and that player 1 being uh, player 1 being uh, you know uh, uh, be uh, sort of being rational and scared of that comes to brings the game to know that ok. Now, this 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 assured mutual destruction is uh, or mutually assured destruction this is this is a term that is used in geopolitics to refer to exactly these situations where countries or or groups uh, you know terrorist organizations etcetera you may want to negotiate with them and so on, but at, at the same time there is always this fear that they, they could explode a nuclear weapon or something like that and then you know not only damage themselves, but also damage everyone else ok. So, dealing with countries that have that that do not have a single point of uh, of governance or a single uh, or a trustable rationality brings up this this particular issue ok. And you can think of this as as a way of for which uh, by uh, by which you uh, you know you can ju try to justify justify this uh, the the threat equilibrium as a valid outcome also because it in fact does play out 